it's time for real. 100% this time. If it's not 100%, it's going to be <laughs> interesting. But we are en route. It is daytime, which is very rare for me to go into actual labor. Um, and I am I'm actually just excited this time. I had to really like just release expectations and um, accept that baby was going to come when it wanted to come. And now I'm just honestly really excited. Hello. 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 Ay, ay, ay. I want to introduce you to somebody. Meet Andrew Thomas. We had a boy and this boy loves to eat. Look at this. <laughs> Are you looking for something to eat? So after a very disappointing false alarm, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it was a couple days before Christmas. It was actually on my son James's birthday that we went to the hospital with the false alarm. I began to feel intense labor pains very, very, very early in the morning of December 29th. So I started timing them while watching a, um, a movie and my app that I was timing them on within five contractions was like, pack your bag and go to the hospital. <laughs> so we got to the hospital by 8.15 a.m. and I was seven centimeters <laughs> upon check-in and then I basically had three more centimeters to go before this little baby arrived. So I want to take a moment and just talk about fear because I don't think I really realized how afraid I was of this birth. I was editing the video for the, the last one where I went into labor falsely and I could not believe how many times I said in that video that I did not want to be laboring until 10 centimeters in my car like i was clearly afraid of how this labor was gonna go and if you've been following me on social media for a while you know i've been talking about control and how much i desire control and how challenged i feel when i'm not in control so it's not really a big surprise but even i was really surprised watching the video and editing it how many times I said that I did not want to be in my car <laughs> 10 centimeters. So, and I just think it's an interesting thing to talk about and unpack because I think it's fairly relatable. I think a lot of people, you know, if you were to ask a lot of moms who are expecting, there is an element of fear in the pregnancy or in the birth. Um, I think it's a fairly relatable thing. And so I'm just, it's interesting to reflect on my own experience. I want to share a couple of things that helped me to be less afraid. As I shared in my previous video where we went to the hospital with a false alarm and I was sharing what I packed in my hospital bag as well as the thoughts that were in my head and you can click right there I'm holding the baby so I can't really <laughs> show you you can click up in the cards for that video I was curious to see what this was gonna be like now that I have mindset coaching in my back pocket, so to speak. So I want to share with you what it was like. So the contractions were intense and there were a few moments when I did get very genuinely afraid because they had me pace the lobby this time. So I basically went, you know, very far labor in my car the last time with baby Colleen. This time, because it was so packed in labor and delivery, I basically just paced the lobby and I'm certain I did. I must have done at least three to four centimeters just pacing the lobby. Now, what that allowed me to do was to really figure out the thoughts. And my personal trainer, Jessica, who I love so dearly, gave me a thought that I thought was so interesting by a text. She was like, you have been training for this. And that one was so helpful. So as I felt the contractions get intense, I would say the thought, you've been training for this. 
And that would definitely help me keep me in the present moment. Another thought that was incredibly helpful was again, my personal trainer's voice. It was really funny how much she would come up in my, in my labor. But um, I often, when I do sets of weights with her, I'll often say something like, there's no way I'm gonna finish this. And she'll just be like, come on, you can do three more. And so when they told me I was seven centimeters, I did go to a place of, oh my gosh, I have to do three more. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so intense. And I went to this place of, come on, you can do three more centimeters. And it was literally my trainer's voice in my head. So that was a really funny one. And then another thought that definitely has come from my Catholic mindset training and understanding myself. And now this is not, this is definitely not a Catholic lens of any kind, but definitely has come from understanding myself and my own mindset coaching. I'm very competitive with myself. And so I went into a place of competition with myself where I said, let's see how long you can stay in the moment as opposed to getting scared. And so when the pain would get really intense and it felt like, oh my gosh, you're not gonna survive this, I literally would jump into competition with my self mode. So that was fascinating to kind of experiment with and was really, really, really helpful. And then the final thing that I want to share with you that was so interesting was when it came to the final, final, final push. And for those of you who have given birth naturally, no epidural, no laughing gas, no nothing. For those of you who have given birth naturally, you know what the ring of fire feels like. I, I really thought I couldn't make it. Like I just was like, I remember I, I did get to a one point where I was weepy um, calling for my husband. I was like, Josh, Josh, Josh. And I remember just being like, there's no way I can do this. And again, it was my trainer's voice that I heard in my head and I could hear her say, well, it's not like you're not gonna finish. Like you're not leaving here until you finish. And that was another really interesting thought to just get me through that final push. And like I said, I got to the hospital at about 8.15. He was born by 9.10. So it was a fairly fast, fairly rapid labor. Um, I went three centimeters in about, I guess, 30 minutes or so. Um, and the final push, it was about three big pushes and then he came flying out. And I'm just so grateful for him. I'm so grateful that um, the, the relief I feel is quite interesting. I don't think I realized just how much I was hanging on to fear and control and just worry about a myriad of things, including who's gonna watch my kids, including COVID, including um, the pain and being in my car and all that stuff. And it just feels so um, good. I definitely feel so relieved. I'm so grateful to God. It was a very bonding moment for me and my husband, a very intimate, unitive, you know, just, it, it, it's, it's so um, special. The moments right after having a baby are just so special and intimate when, you know, nobody else in the world really knows <laughs> that this baby exists and it's just such a special time. So I'm so, 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 so grateful. So needless to say, I feel relieved, but I, I think relief is, is not the best word or not the most correct word. I think it's more accomplished. I, I really feel like I got through something that I did not think I was gonna get through, which is why I had so much fear wrapped up in this, or I thought it was gonna be a lot worse than it ended up being. And I just, that's the thing, it's like, it's natural to be afraid, and I think it's just very human to be afraid. Um, we are human beings who need God after all, but to remember that oftentimes the thing that we worry about never comes to pass. Like I was f fearing way too much who was gonna take care of my kids. And I was fearing way too much where people were gonna be, would somebody be there with them? And everything was completely fine. Like in the absence of my family being here who would have in normal conditions dropped everything to fly down to Florida and be with my kids for as long as needed. In the absence of that, everything was fine. Like we had friends who came and dropped everything 
which was just incredibly generous and amazing. And so I'm so grateful for that. And a lot of the things with the, you know, being in the car and laboring with fear, those didn't happen either. And so it's just, <laughs> it's just really incredible. It does require faith. And I've been thinking a lot about what St. Paul says about faith. Faith is a belief in things unseen. And there has got to be this element of faith when we are afraid. We have got to lean into faith and, and and believe, even if we cannot see, that whatever it is that we are afraid of, in my case, having a safe and not in the car labor, having my children being accounted for, I got all kinds of amazing pictures of my children so happy, you know, being taken care of by friends. And I'm just, so often when I look at my life, the things that I fear will happen just don't come to pass. And then I'm often saying to myself, how can I doubt God? Like truly, how can I doubt God when he is so incredibly abundant? That's probably the biggest reaction I'm getting is like, why do I bother doubting God and being afraid? Which again, is a human thing. We would not be human if we didn't have these feelings, but I'm just reminded so much on the other side of experiences with fear. I'm reminded so much of God's abundance and his blessing and that truly faith is the belief in things unseen. And all of this reminds me of the final chapter in my book, The Possibility Mom, It's Time to Push. And when I wrote the book, I had had seven <laughs> births and uh, I was talking about how I've done that dance of, you know, the doctor taking his position at, at the foot of the hospital bed, and then in a few exhilarating moments, the baby coming out. And I want to just read for you the section that I say right at the end, that giving birth to anything new, whether being birthed a biological child, adopting a child by adoption, starting a new business, leaving a comfortable job, saying no to people who take advantage of you it's full of uncertainty we don't have a clear picture of what our life will look like on the other side but when we push through the pain and uncertainty the fear of failure and risk of rejection incredible things can happen it's time for you to push you can do it you can dream and then design a life that will shock and surprise you you can chart your own course you can measure success by your own standards and you can be happy but it's up to you to push that's the first step to bringing forth a new life and no one can do it for you i'm just so reminded how on the other side of fear lies such incredible gifts and in my case today it's a baby and whatever it is that you're dreaming of that's what's on the other side of fear and uncertainty for you anyway that's it that's all i got i'm so grateful i'm so happy it is a joy to share these moments in my family's life with all of you and i'm just so excited to see what 2022 has in store for you for me if you are looking for a fun fresh start to your 2022 if you want to push on a new version of your life i of course have got some fun ways that you can join me conquer your calendar is a great place to begin it is my signature time management program where I help moms design their most ideal lives and manage their time without guilt. So if you would love to spend more time doing the things you love to do with the people that you love, and you would love to manage time without guilt, join me in Conquer Your Calendar, where I've got a really fun contest happening right now that you can join to get your 2022 started off in an amazing way. And you can get all the details for that by clicking the link in the description below.